In this video, we are going to study the losses that are occurred in the canal. So basically, the losses in canal comprise evaporation from the surface and the seepage through the bed and sides of the drain. So the two major losses are evaporation and percolation that will be occurred throughout the side slopes and at the paid channel of the canal. So generally the loss due to the evaporation from the canal system depends upon the climatic condition of the region and uh, hence it cannot be or it can never be prevented. But certainly uh, when uh, yes we have studied in a hydrology chapter so certainly we have the uh, various measures to protect uh, or to prevent that uh, evaporation losses but the methods are too uh, hectic and time taking time consuming so uh, yes it cannot be uh, prevented so the losses by evaporation forms a minor part hardly one to five percent of the seepage loss See, uh, as the water surface is open to the atmosphere, but during the summer, as the temperature increases, the rate of evaporation uh, will be uh, hardly 1 to 5 percent of that seepage loss. So, hence, in the most of the cases, evaporation lo loss is not significant. So, here we are generally uh, neglected that evaporation loss as it has the um, quantity and as its evaporation rate is 1 to 5 percent of a seepage loss. So you can imagine that how or uh, at what rate this, this evaporation loss will be occurred. Then uh, loss due to the seepage depends upon mainly the position of subsoil water table. So yes, the main and the major thing is ground water table position. Where exactly the water table is there and at what level the ground water table is reached. Where is the, it, it, it's nearby or its depth of the ground water table is shallow. It's nearer to the ground surface. So definitely uh, if the seepage loss occurred, so certainly the water logging will be uh, occurred there in that particular region or in that uh, canal section. Even uh, there is the uh, greater depth in between the ground surface and the ground water table. So the percolation loss and the seepage rate will be maximum. Then the porosity of a soil and subsoil. Yes, the porosity depending upon whether the soil is porous one, then it has the maximum permeability rate. And because of this, the water will get percolated easily and fastly. Then the extent of absorbing medium, pores and voids that are available in the channel section or in the subsoil strata. So this is also responsible for the seepage loss. Design of a canal cross section. So how the first point, depth of a water in the canal. If the greater the depth, greater is the loss of the water. Secondly, the velocity of water in the canal. The loss decreases with the increase in the velocity. And if the velocity is minimum, then definitely losses are maximum. Then the physical properties of a canal water, like the temperature of a water. See, if the temperature of the water increases, definitely loss also losses will also increases. The amount of the silt carried in a suspension. See, the loss will be decreased with the increase in the amount of the silt carried on the suspension. If the silt will be deposited, certainly the canal water uh, carrying capacity is being reduced and because of this silt particle the water that will be uh, percolated into this particle and hence the 
uh, losses will be maximum. But if the silt is in a suspension order, means the velocity is higher, velocity is greater in that section, then this silt has the tendency to move with this velocity of the flow and it flows in the suspension part only, then the loss will be decreased. So based on this phenomena itself, the Kennedys had been given and Lessis also had been given such a theory which, uh, in which they uh, told us that silt is remain in the suspension order. Then we have a conditions of a canal system. The loss decreases with the age of a canal and increases with the extent of a absorbing medium. So generally, uh, these canals uh, will be uh, usually measured by a simple method which is known as the inflow and outflow method. So what exactly happened and what exactly they had done in this uh, system, in this method. Basically, they had selected one reach and one length. See, this method is called as an inflow and outflow method. So by using this method, we can measure and we can determine the losses of a canal. This is simple method. So in this method, a long reach, a distance of a length of a long length will be selected of that particular canal. Then the discharge observations are taken at the beginning the, and at the uh, end of this reach for several days continuously. So here we need to do a inspection at the uh, entry point as well as at the end point or at some interval points for several days continuously. A fairly high level with the constant gauge should be maintained in the reach. The outlets or any off-taking channels should be completely closed during observation period. That means only that canal has the maximum water carrying capacity. So all the feeder and all the branched canal, all the distributors will be closed. The differences between the discharge entering the reach and that leaving the reach is the loss occurring in the reach. Exactly. When we are saying that if this is the length of the canal, if this is the canal and this is the entry point inlet and this is the outlet, so the amount of the water which is coming into this canal that discharge one and the amount of the water that will be passing through this canal at the outlet, this is Q2. So the difference between this will be the losses in the canal. So Yes, the losses are expressed in the QMAC per million square meter of a wetted perimeter. And uh, it is also expressed as the depth of a water lost in 24 hours over the area of a wetted perimeter. It is also expressed as a percentage of the discharge of the channel. Also a percentage per kilometer length of a canal. So depending upon the position of a water table, the seepage loss from the canal generally occurs into two ways, that is absorption and percolation. So uh, absorption means what? This In this absorption and in this percolation, see absorption when the water table is considerably, considerably below the ground level, yes, just now I had explained you that. The water seeping through the pores is unable to join the water table and wets the subsoil locally forming a saturated bulb. And the zone in between this saturated zone and the zone of capillary moisture remains unsaturated. So it means that because of that level of the groundwater, uh, this uh, water cannot join to this or it cannot move further into a to join this capillary zone. So suddenly there, the unsaturated zone will be formed and the uh, seepage loss will be occurred. And the percolation means what? Uh, the, when the water table is close to the ground level, the seepage water may establish a direct and continuous flow in between the canal section and water table. Thus the space between the water table and canal bed enclosed by two flow lines. And it remains completely saturated. So this is the, or this is something regarding the losses. How and in which manner the losses will be occurred in the canal and how we can find out this 
process and how we can prevent it, this losses. Thanks for watching this video.